what's up guys thanks for tuning in to twisted youngins the most orthodox show on the globe we hope everybody's having a wonderful blessed day today staying out the way staying safe staying grounded i guess um as always i am one of your hosts myra b king and this is desi des and it's your boy mojo in the building we have a special guest with us today so let the people know who you are good, mo- good afternoon everybody my name is troy uh born and raised in uh, delaware and i'm just so happy to be here with these youngins right here Absolutely. oh well, thank you man Appreciate for uh, giving us giving us your time and so you say you're from delaware yes ma'am i'm certainly am i've been there been living there most of my life until I transitioned into going to college after I graduated. So right now I'm, I'm stay, staying in Richmond, Virginia. Okay, cool. Um, so how long have you been in Richmond? I've been in Richmond for about eight years now. I met my wife here. Um, after I graduated college, we got married. Um, and, you know, life has been going great so far. How was it uh, growing up for you? Did you... Um... Uh, uh, growing up for me, it was a pretty a tough struggle. You see, my mom she raised five boys uh, by herself uh, until she got uh, married. But it was a a struggle. We grew up in a a small house, three bedroom house with uh, you know some rats, some roaches. We had to we we went through a lot, and that's something that um what drove me to be where I am today because of the way I saw her struggle, and I never wanted to see her struggle like that ever again. Mm. And so um, as a teenager, um, what was your life like? You know what I mean? Like um, for because you wasn't you didn't always have Christ with you, correct? Uh, So um, I was born. I was my mom raised us in church. So I've always been in church, actually, uh, since I was a kid. And um, ever after I graduated college, you know, I kind of transitioned from that church lifestyle because of, you know, me being on my own, I've been in church all my life. And, you know, I started making decisions on my own and I didn't really have to listen to, you know, my mom anymore because I was, you know, I was an adult. Yeah. So what was it? Um, How was it when you first got into the world? I should say when you were out here handling business on your own, what was your some of your first experiences with that? So my first experiences uh, with just being on my own, um, you know, at first it started out great. You know, I met some new people. Uh, got some new friends and I started doing things that you know at first I didn't think it was bad but I started doing things that the crowd that I was hanging around with doing as far as you know smoking marijuana every day um, partying all the time not really showing that I was a person that had Christ in me because I did get saved when I was 13 years old but I wasn't doing the Christ like things that God wanted me to do. So I just start, you know, doing things that I felt was, you know, necessary for me to do because I was on my own and I wanted to experience life. And, you know, that kind of took me to down the wrong um, path. And I encourage other ones that are watching this not to go that route as well. Now, since you said that uh, you got into the world, um, you started, you know, partying and smoking. And and, and I'm just going to ask you this just for the audience, because a lot of people battle with this. You know, were you watching porn at the time as well? Oh, yes. I'm not going to lie. That's something that I'm not even going to lie. That's something I still battle with. God is still working with me with watching uh, pornography. But everyone's not perfect. And that's the way I look at it. And eventually God is going to remove that from my life because I have full faith in him that he will. And that's what it's all about, about keeping that faith and trusting in God that he will make a way for you to not do those things. Same way with me, you know, not smoking anymore. He took that away from me. I felt that it wasn't meant for me to do it anymore. And one day I just, you know, I finished my last blunt and I said, God, I don't want this anymore. And once I did, this, once he, oh, go ahead. If this is after you um, basically became saved all over again, start following Christ. Yeah. So let me um, just dive into yeah, this yeah. part of my life. So uh, I have, I've been battling with this uh, struggle for a long time with me stopping smoking. Um, after I, after my sophomore year of college, I've been battling because I wanted to stop for so long but it was something I was really addicted to and I didn't realize it at the time because you know it was something that uh, I I did every day and um, I 
eventually moved on, got follow, I started going to church um, after I graduated college. My wife found this church on Facebook, and we've been going there for some time. And I've been there for about eight months before, you know, this bad situation happened in my life. And I'm going to get into that eventually. But eight months after that, I stopped smoking for two months, and I was feeling great, feeling awesome. And then a month later, well, a couple weeks later, my mom died after those two months of smoking. And that really was a time for me to uh, where my faith was tested because I'm like, God, why did you take my mom away? I'm struggling with this. This was a hard moment for me. This happened at two weeks before Christmas had took place. And um, after I got that phone call, my mom died. It took me two days. After two days of, of me experiencing that loss, I got back into smoking again. And once I start doing it again, uh, it was so hard for me to stop. I literally was smoking more than what I smoked before, four blunts a day, nonstop. Because, and it was easier for me to smoke four blunts a day because I was working from home at the time. And with working from home, all I could think about is my mom the entire time. So what did I do? I went to that blunt because it helped me to not think about that pain. It was a hole in my heart. And it was so hard to fill that void. And I stopped going to church for a couple, few months because I'm like, man, I can't deal with this right now and be in church. So eventually, three months, four months later, after, you know, experiencing the loss of my mom, I got back into church. And that's when things started to really change for me. That one day, that first day I got back into church, I felt as soon as I got the car, I felt the whole the uh, the enemy try to stop me from going in there because I felt so much anxiety built inside of me because I'm like, man, I haven't been here for so long. All I could think about is my mom and I do not want to step foot in this building. But when I did that, that's what everything started to change for me. I started going back to church consistently every Sunday, um, you know, speak, talking with the men, the men of the church, the deacons and. No, I'm not going to lie. They helped me get through this bad situation that I faced in my life. And then in June, I went to this men conference and really started to connect with the men of in the church. And um, two months later, they, they started talking about baptism. And I felt God leading me to that position of getting baptized because I did get baptized when I was a kid. But that was a decision that my mom made, not for me. So that's something that I chose to do. I got baptized uh, August 21st, and that's when everything changed for me in my entire life. Shifted from that that depressed man that I was when I lost my mom at the beginning of this year to the man I am today, so powerful, so filled with joy, and so filled with so much gratitude of God saving my soul from that, from me smoking every day, because it felt like I was sinking myself deeper and deeper and deeper into this hole that eventually if I didn't get out, I wouldn't be able to climb myself out of. So with me just, you know, speaking, talking to God every single day, um, waking up every morning, I, I go to this river um, at where I live at and I just sit there and I just read the word of God and that prepare me every single day um, to go through the battles that I may, may face in this world. Because every day you're going to be faced with a trial. And with me being tested with my faith for, you know, that those months of me, you know, experiencing the loss of my mom, it got stronger and stronger because of me uh, building that stronger relationship with God and uh, getting baptized again. And, and you, uh, you said you was baptized August 21st of this year? August 21st of this year. Yes. And that's when everything changed for me. And, uh, and, and are, you said you still, are you still battling uh, porn? Mm -hmm. Yes, I am. Okay. So, so you, you still, you, you got baptized and you still fight. So what do you mean battling? So therefore you, you will go and watch some porn sometime. Like how yeah, I'm not going to, I don't do it off this like, cause with my job, I work from home twice a week yeah. and it's, I struggle with it because my job is so stressful because I'm working in accounting and sometimes, you know, you have those days where it's stressful and, you know, I feel, you know, the enemy is saying, take your mind off. This is what you can do. Take your mind off. Just watch a little porn here and there. And, um, and I do that. I'm, I'm going to be honest. I do. And do you just watch it or do you masturbate? <laughs> he, he, what do no, you I mean? Like, no, no, no. He go ahead and talk to me. But yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Yes, I do. 
I do well, not we'll appreciate you being honest, yeah. first of all, before yeah. he Go Yeah, ahead. I mean, uh so, hey. so basically if you, okay, so so basically if you know if you die today, do you think you're going to heaven? Oh, most definitely I will. And I, the reason why I say that is because in the word of God, um of John chapter three, verse sixteen. A man that um, confesses the Lord that he is his savior, he will he will be saved. And uh, something that I learned is that you never lose that salvation because of you. Um, you know, you're saved by God. You already confess that he's your believer, that you believe. Uh, uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Huh? And go ahead. I was going to say and I was going to say that, you know, even though that you are a uh, yourself, you're saved by the Holy Ghost, you still have have those battles it's not like you're gonna you know everything that you have uh, been going through for so long those battles that you face those sins that you uh, deal with every day is gonna you know go away that easy it's gonna take some time and that's something that i realized that you know everything takes time to you know to change and to grow and you know i'm um the first thing was you know smoking weed the second one was drinking alcohol every day well i want to say every day but going out you know, having some time with my wife, drinking alcohol, and those two things have already been gone because I, I, I just gave it up, and I know for this next thing is going to be, you know, with me with pornography, and I feel it because I used to do it, you know, before I got baptized, I used to be more than twice a week when I'm working from home, but now it's just, you know, when I'm working from home, I have those tendencies of doing it. So, well, uh, Hebrews, uh, well, I disagree. Uh... Don't I believe you can lose your salvation. Uh, Hebrews 10 verses 26 says, if we willfully sin after we have received the truth of the knowledge, then there, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sin. So God has a cutoff point and uh, uh, watching porn and jacking off is a, uh, a, a willful sin. It's not it's not just a thought, the spur of the moment thought. That's something that actually has, you have to gather whatever lubricant you use. You have to get that in place. You have to make sure nobody's going to come in the room. You have to find your fetish on the uh, the porn site. Look it up because I'm no, I know you're not just going to jack off or to the first page. So you got to, you know, search for your little fetish or whatever, big booty duties or a girl getting hit from the back, girl riding, you know what I'm saying? You got to look for that because I was battling a uh, porn addiction. But then once I got baptized, once I started truly believing in Christ and truly walk, uh, uh, deny, God said, if anyone would uh, come after me, let him deny himself, then take up his cross and follow him. So it's a path. It's a, we have to follow Christ. And, you know, you're overriding Christ by jacking off. You're overriding Christ when you want to go watch porn. You're not thinking about him because if you thought about him and you truly loved him, then you wouldn't do these things. Right. OK. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. So, so that's a that's a willful sin. And then uh, Luke 11 verses 24 to 26, it said uh, when an impure spirit comes out of a man, that's what happened when you got baptized. And, you know, an impure spirit come, comes out of a man. It goes through arid places seeking for rest and does not find it. Then says, I will return to the house I left. When he arrives, he finds the house swept clean and put in order. Then it goes and takes seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they go in and live there. And the and the final condition of that person is worse than the first. So you're you, you're giving in to your your own lust. The devil is tempting you. He don't have to tempt you that much because you, 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 you have an excuse built up because I'm, I'm stressed. I get stressed as well. You know, that's that's a that's a that that's it within this walk. You know, God tests it. Bible says God tests the righteous, but his soul hates the wicked and the ones who do, does evil. So he tested up, tests us. So he's going to test you with stress and see if you're going to uh, use your built in excuse to go jack off and commit this willful sin. So uh, you probably, you know, get in the Bible more, man, and realize that God is not going to continue to forgive you because you're not asking for true forgiveness. You don't you don't you don't really feel like uh, what um. Uh, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the uh, almighty uh, God. So if, if you built on fear, if you fear the Lord, why would you ever jack off? If you fear the Lord, I would rather kill myself. If I'm if I'm in if I'm in a uh, real fear, but uh, say if a, a, a what uh, like a bully told you don't walk on this street, you're not going to walk on the street because you're in fear of him. Right. You need to yeah, fear right. the 
you need to adjust your your, your uh, mindset and truly fear the Lord. You you, you know we, we don't jack off. I mean, fear fear of the Lord is the beginning of. And wisdom. before you go, Mo, just give me thirty seconds. And 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 the only reason I, I brought up this because I know men and women better with that. I used yeah. to watch porn. You know, you want to see what. That you you know what the man like what they into you know what I mean yeah. I, but but I don't do it anymore like every since I got saved I don't watch porn anymore that's something that I had to uh had to put away go ahead Mojo that's all I want to say. no 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 I'm with you I mean I used to watch porn as well and um I got saved later than they did so they're a little further along in their journey than I am what I will say is what Dez did it's true if God came back today I tell him all the time he's taking only two percent of the world back ninety eight percent of the world is going to hell whether they know it or not. So it's very important that people pay attention to what they're doing in this world and things of that nature, because like he said, you're not thinking about it. You're actually getting into it. You're actually doing the deed to think about the deed itself would be a committed sin because that's iniquity. You're thinking about it because Jesus said, if you think about it, you've already done it. Yeah. It's premeditated murder. Basically, you're premeditating on what you're about to do. And yeah. I can I can attest to that as well. You're playing I with stopped, the Lord, brother. You, yeah, you I stopped, with the Lord. I stopped smoking cigarettes. And I don't smoke cigarettes or weed anymore. But lately, I've been stressed at my job, stressed to the point where I get ready to go on break and I think about having a cigarette. Hey, what you do? Deny yourself, about, don't you? I got to sit right then and there. I got to stop and pray about it. I got to go to the car, pray about having those things. Because even at work, in that environment, in that moment, someone could walk up to me and say, hey, bro, I know you're tired here. You want a cigarette? Yeah, you, thank you, you for being about? honest. Yeah, you, thank you. Yeah, so no, how no, are you no, feeling? No. Yeah. This is one way how I stopped jerking off or stop even getting into porn and things like that. A brother told me, a pastor told me one time from a video I was watching, he said, how would you feel? If God was sitting there watching you watch, porn he is and watching you jerk off. He is now. Think about this. Not only is God sitting there, you're televised in heaven. All the angels in heaven, as he said, <laughs> there's no clean things in heaven. All of heaven is sitting there watching you watch porn and fornicate with your, your sins. So, it, not the just Bible you, says, but all of us. The you Bible know? says your sins stinks in his nostrils. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> so he, he's watching all of us do things like that. So how Why do you? Start? How are you? Feel? Okay, so with this being said, and um, only reason I ask that is because a lot of people don't speak on porn, and a lot of men and women battle with that. Yeah. Um. So you over trying to calm that addiction. Um. How do you overcome? Do you, yeah. How are you? How are you going to try to? Overcome it. Do you see yourself like completely like removing it away, like not doing it, like not jacking off? Because I because I feel if you're watching porn, do you ever, you know, like if, if you're looking at other women on a computer, just imagine you what you think. Hold on, just, ima just hold on, just imagine what's thinking in your mind in real life. You're not saying it, but it's a thought. So how like um do you think that it's something that you could like overcome and completely wipe out, or is it just like something that you know, like you're truly battling with and it may take a little longer. Man, after listening to this, I'm not going to lie. You guys really <laughs> pushing me never to do that crap again because just the way you guys explained it and put it into a um, perspective of, you know, God watching me doing that mess. And, you know, I see myself never doing that crap again because of, you know, just thinking about that now because now I'm going to have that thought in the back of my head every time when I feel like, I want to, you know, you know, watch some porn or anything like that. By me just thinking about, okay, God's watching me right now. Should I do it? And no, I'm not going to do it now. I feel like what brought me here today was maybe it was meant for me to, you know, have this interview with you all. So that way I can, you know, confess my sins and, you know, you guys, you know, show me the way of not doing that crap anymore. And, you know, it's it's always God aligning me with the right individuals to show me where I need to be. And, you know, I, I don't feel, you know, most people that probably will, um, you know, try to uh, defend themselves and stuff like that and feel some type of way because of this. And I'm not that person at all. I take what I take what is was said and evaluate it and look at it from, you know, from God's perspective. And I see that, you know, you guys are true men um, the Bible believe in um, yeah. men and women and I see that so that's how I feel about it I I definitely you know I'm gonna pray tonight and I'm I'm gonna get rid of that for real because that's something that well, I really yeah. well I want to show you how God worked because I had never brought up that in the interview to be honest with you um I had never 
just brought up that question about porn. I never even said that I watched porn in an interview. So you're right. The way God God aligns people for a reason for them to admit to their sins and not for them to feel um, embarrassed about it or to, or to uh, come down on other people about it. But the first thing is uh, admitting it before God and, mm-hmm. and, and stopping it. You know what I mean? And also praying that God removes it from your life. You know what I mean? And, and, and hey, when you listen, listen, in the book of John, chapter eight, he said, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Now, in the next verse, right after that in chapter, I mean, in verse nine, it says that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us for our sins and to cleanse us from our unrighteousness. Now, the point is, you have to admit what's wrong first. Now, mm-hmm. after you admit it, you have to behave on it. That's why I tell people all the time to repent. People don't know what that word repent means. Repent means to apologize and then make a course of action after that. So it's a cause and effect. The cause is the apology. Mm-hmm. The effect is you changing your behavior afterwards. That's why Dad said you can lose your grace. Absolutely. Yeah. You think you're going to keep coming to the Lord praying that hey, hey, I repent for this. I repent for smoking at night. But you're going to smoke soon as you get done. Repent. Yeah eventually he's going to get tired of hearing your word and he will step away. And as they say in the Bible, God said it himself, I will give you to yourself. He'll let you go ahead and keep doing what you've been doing. The devil's not bothering a sinner. As a dog returns to his vomit. Absolutely. So a fool returns to his food. And, you know, apology. Yeah, apology without effective change ain't nothing but a form of manipulation. And you're not going to manipulate the ultimate manipulation. I bet, hey, I, I'm just real quick and then we're going to move on. After mm-hmm. you get your release, I bet you, you, you like, man, why you're did I feel do that? Me, sir. Let's be honest. You feel feel mm-hmm. after you're done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I've been there, brother. You ain't got to say to me. I've Boy, been there. Feel, feel feel a wife, man. Uh, take it out on her. You got you a wife. Man. Absolutely. You know what? And that's that was what I was going to get to. You said they rejoice over a sinner. Coming One last back. thing. The reason your flesh desires that and you think of that is because those are demons that's in you, brother. Absolutely. Those are demons that's in you. The spirit of love that won't work. And they, and they know us. The demons yeah. know us. They've been with us for so long. You know back. what I mean? Your house was clean when they came back. Oh, oh we listen, just chill. The devil, the devil would hey. never tempt you with something <laughs> so, that you don't want. He's okay. not going to. Just coming into this interview is really helping me to, you know, evolve into a better man and, you know, be that leader that God wants me to be. Just Amen. To stop everything, stop all the stupid sins, pornography. Yes, I got rid of, I was able to overcome smoking and drinking and stuff like that, but I want to overcome everything. And that's that's literally something I, I went to the altar this morning and prayed to God about and look at him answering the prayer. It's just so amazing how God works. And like you said, God, didn't, you didn't have, you never asked that question to nobody, but God was, you know, was had that in your thought process to ask me that because he knew that that's something that I was battling with and that's something that he wanted me to overcome. And I'm, I'm so grateful. That's all I can say. Oh, man. Man. Amen, man. man. We we'll appreciate you brother. sharing that, man. We we'll appreciate you sharing that. And to see like, uh, you know, you're married. Um, you have any children? No, no children. Yeah. Well, that, uh, you know, that's, that's good. You're, you're married and, uh, and you're trying, you know, we need to see more. Um, we, we, we need to see more of this people right. trying to change their life. You know, it's being exploited of, uh, drugs, smoking, drinking, porn, being ignorant and all yeah, of that. And yeah. we don't see more of this, you know what I mean? And uh, that's the, and that's why we do it. That's why we appreciate it. So we definitely appreciate you share, sharing your testimony. Amen. Um, yes. When you go through those, you'll find out the value in the life of the love that God has for you. And you'll find the appreciation of the fact that he just even still deals with you. Even after everything that you've done, he's still willing to sit there and wait for you to come back home to him. That's what, really drove me this morning to get back to that altar and pray and get that lust out of me because it's like you said, it's the it's the enemy inside of me. It's the, the demons inside of me that's really trying to take me away from God and that's not where I want to go. I want to move closer to God, but the enemy wants me to move farther away from him. And it's all because like you said, me watching, you know, pornography and really giving in to those those um, spirit, man, you open your door up. You open the door. Do you? That's why you feeling like they choking you and you a little afraid waking up can't go to sleep. God did not give us a spirit a spirit of fear. So even in my dreams, if I'm getting attacked, you know, I'm not afraid of nothing like that. It's, yeah, Jesus. Is what it is. Be bold. I know I got the Lord in me, man. Do, do you uh do you well, I know I, okay. go ahead? No, you go ahead. I was gonna say I know I have the Lord in me too. It's just Still getting tested. along with the demons, along with the demons. Now. No, no, I mean, you know, we we everybody, clear. everybody is fighting. 
either to yeah. get the demons out or you're fighting yeah. to keep them away. Exactly. Yeah. One of the two. It's one of the it, two in the battle with. I Christ. always say that uh, mag it like um, okay, the devil's power is like Magneto, and if you sin it, you're like Wolverine. Yeah, like he so he has control over he you. He could easily pull you to. Now, granted, you, it's a lot of people that go to church right he now, but they sin it. Yeah. So devil, yeah. devil, uh, people with demons up in church. Don't get it twisted. It's I mean, people up in there that's committing church. adultery. I mean, that's that's where, pastors that's committing adultery, that's having sex with all co- people in their congregation. That's so, adulterers. That's what the, the devil, devil wants. Is the, too. yeah, the devil want the church people. He don't want the people that's already <laughs> sinning. He got them already. Yeah. He want the people that's trying to get cleaned up <laughs> and put nowhere and, and turn away from them. Yes. And uh, do you now? Do you celebrate? Are you? Do you celebrate Christmas? Yeah. Oh, we okay. got to get you. Are you that. so? So you do know that you know these are pagan holidays, right? You, you know, Christmas. you know, Christmas is not Christ's birthday. You know, we we celebrate a lot of these paganism <laughs> holidays that we don't even know the real meaning behind it. Like, so God told us make worship no graven image of Him, and the whole point of Christmas is that this is supposed to be the day that Jesus was born. But if you want to be honest about it, we can all say that there is no historical reference history. Historically, they can't find a science to prove that December 25th was Jesus's birthday. Nowhere in the Bible, the Dead Sea Scrolls, nowhere can you find a date where it says the 25th was his birthday. Yet somehow, some way, at some point in time, these pagan churches came up with a day, a Sears holiday gift card wrap type of day where they're going to name this Christmas and we're just going to celebrate the birthday. Well, of no, Jesus. they no, no, no. They celebrating a God. It is. Like, it, is that the sun? Never, God? Yeah, yeah, yeah they the celebrating the God. God. Rob, it's it's right? the sun God. It's you Rob. know what I mean? Yeah, you can call uh, Rob you want, yeah. but uh, it's, it's not. Let him go. Go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say, what's the problem with, you know, celebrate Jesus Christ, even though. It may not be the day he was born because, like you said, no one knows. What's the problem? I don't see the problem with, you know, just taking that day and just, you know, giving it to him. Even though we, you know, we supposed to, you know, celebrate him every single day. But, you know, one specific holiday, I don't see the problem. In- so that's why he has like, you, you know, in the Bible, they had like uh, different feasts and Passovers. If you really want to celebrate him like that in that way. But if you want to get technical, we don't need a day to celebrate Jesus Christ to be with family. Yeah. Like if we were a family like today. We can cook a meal. I can say, hey, thanks for being my brother. You know, here's your gift. I don't need to do that on December 25th. I don't need to uh, buy my husband a gift on on Valentine's Day. That's a really bad holiday as well. Yeah. I can do that any day of the week. And that's why um, with with the with the paganism, they saw that uh, God, that Jesus had uh, holidays to be. Well, I don't really want to say holidays, but Passover and feast to be kept. So they came up with their paganism, holidays and feast to Easter, be kept. Easter, Halloween. Yeah. You celebrate Halloween? You, you, you. No. Okay. Yeah. You celebrate Easter? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah, we yeah, and and, and I, I just and I just was celebrating that last year, yeah. but this year I'm trying something different. Like I told my family, like, hey. I'm not celebrating the holidays this year. I'm trying to uh, grow my relationship with God. You know what I mean? And uh, like I said, uh, I'm still going to get my family uh, gifts for their birthdays or whatnot. But instead of giving them a gift on Christmas, I can give them something before Christmas. You know, we can you know cook a meal and I can say, hey, I, I just want to celebrate you all. We celebrate brand family. Uh, I'm just trying to come out of the paganism, you know what I mean? And to really worship him because I can't say I worship him and I'm still celebrating the sun God holidays on the, on the day that they want us to celebrate it. Yeah. So who we, and another Des question, do you know who we are in the Bible? Our ethnicity? Uh, we're black African American, right? Whoa, Lord have mercy. That's two Not continents. Oh, you got go that. Ahead. Go ahead, Dave. Yeah, you got that. Listen, sir, nowhere in the Bible do you hear African American? And when they mention black, they're referring to Cush when they mention black. But Noah, yeah. simple as this. Noah had three sons, Ham, Shem, and Japheth. Ham is the progenitor of dark races based off the Zondervan Bible Dictionary. That means Egyptians, Libyans, Canaanites, things of that nature. Japheth would be an Assyrian, basically of Caucasus Mountain, things of that nature, lighter skins. Now, Shem would be the bloodline that Judah came from, the same bloodline that Jesus came out of, which would be our bloodline, because you would go back and would say Negro land is where you would find the land of Judah or Weda. Obviously, we have the movie out right now, The Woman King. Well, you had the Dahami tribe that took us out of Judah or Weda and sold us during the transatlantic slave time. 
Now, and before that, that, it was Israel. And I was just going to say, that, it was and when you say African-American, you got to remember that before it was Africa on earlier maps, it was just Ethiopia. It was just lands of what they were. Then all of a sudden you had a man named Africana step on the land and say, we're going to name all of this Africa. And since everything is named Africa, now that translation has gotten everything mixed up. And now people think that everything in Africa is African. When really everyone over there in Africa, majority of them didn't even come from over there. A lot of them came fresh from Jerusalem and out of Israel and ran into Africa being fled so, out. So, so we're the Hebrew Jews. Yeah. So what he's saying, yeah, long story the, short, we're, yeah. we're, you know, we're the children of Israel. We're, yeah. the, we're the Hebrews, you know, yeah. um, of, of the uh, like uh, of, of, of the, the Bible. You know who, he, who he's talking about, like when we when we were led out of Egypt into yes. the wilderness, that was us. Yeah. You know, we were the children of Israel. Yeah. You know what Amen. I mean? Hebrews. Long story and we're going to send you a link so you can you, you know that, especially if you're reading the Bible, I think you'll uh, get more of a connection with the children of Israel in the Bible, the people of God that, you know, he's talking to us in Deuteronomy 28. He's talking about us. He yeah. prophesied what would happen to us if we uh, uh, disobeyed him. So, you know, you, this is something you need to know so you can have a, a sense of pride. Now, that's not how you saved. Of course, we know that. But. You know, it's good to know your history because outside of the Bible, you don't have a history. You don't know who you are. You're going to give me African-American. That's two continents. You know, you don't know nothing. So, you know, we really need to know who we are because these are the last days and we can spread the word. We can tell other people and give them a sense of knowing their self because they don't know who they are. They, if they don't know who they are, they don't have no culture. And we have a culture. It's in the Bible and everybody knows it except us. Yeah, we'll have Mojo send a link to the email yeah. uh, to, so you check out. It's a pastor called uh, Stephen, Stephen Darby and he does a great job explaining like who are we, but not only that, but he gives you the evidence so you can also go and look it up and, yeah, and start putting two and two together. Yeah. And it makes a lot of sense. The verses in the Bible, when you read Deuteronomy and um, all of that, just a sense overall, it gives you a, a better sense of you build a connection with it. So yeah, um, even in the book of Psalms where David yeah. was talking about, they conspired against the nations, you know, <laughs> so that Israel would be cut off and never become and know who she is. That, that describes no one else in this world. Everyone else in this world knows where they come from and know who they are. There's right. only a certain amount of people who don't know. And those people are usually found in the U S and yeah. like you said, we're usually black African American because they've named two different things. Black. They used to call us Negro before Thank that. You. When we came over here, they called us Negroes. Now they call you based off where you come from. So if you come from Mexico, they call you a Mexican. If you come from Asia, they call you an Asian. They called us Negroes when we showed up over here because we came from Negro land. That's another thing that people don't talk about that don't that people just don't know about. Again, in the Stephen Darby video, he'll get into it. He'll break it down, how it came about and where it actually went. So appreciate much. you, brother. No problem. I appreciate you all, too. Thank you for being so blunt. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Listen, brother, listen, God said be truthful. You know, Jesus said, preach the word in season and out of season. You got to cry loud like a trumpet. You know, the righteous Paul, should be as bold as a lion. Absolutely. So, you know, and, and we want you to be saved. You know, that's it. We don't want, we don't want to see you go to and, hell. And to help somebody else. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, you're, you know, you, you, you're a young man. You know what I mean? You'll be able to touch other young men and women. So yeah. it's always, and we're still, I'm still learning. I don't know everything. You know what I mean? What? And that's why I have to continue to stay in the word and meditate on it and continue to do research. So we're no one's perfect at all. We all, you know, fall short of sin. You know what I mean? We're all start, you know, got to continue to educate ourselves in the word. And, and that's what so great about what we're doing now with each other. So yeah. um, we hope you have a blessed day. Uh, we're going to have Mojo send you that link and, uh, we're, and, and and just stay in touch. You know, this is, a, you know, absolutely, good. brother. This is a safe space. You know what I'm saying? We're here to help. Yes, sir. Thank you. Much. I appreciate y'all. Absolutely.